Lena Nielsen, it is such a joy to connect. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing your story in Manifesting Love. Thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you for inviting us to and inspiring us to share our stories in Manifesting Love. Well, I had to, partly because it, it was something that I needed on my own journey. And as you and I have spoken before, when you're single and you're going through this whole process, it can feel very isolating and lonely, whether you're kind of nurturing your heart after a breakup or a divorce or a string of bad relationships. Sometimes we can get down on ourselves. And I thought, well, how, how better to prepare for love than to hear from some other people who've done it. And I love that your story, like so many of the stories in this book, includes a self-love reflection and portion. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you realized that you needed to focus on self-love when you were, you know, ready to say yes to love again after being divorced? Mm. I think it took me quite a while to finally listen. Mm. I think it was really knocking on my door for quite a while. I'd been alone with my son for one year at the time and I was really tired already <laughs> um, and then on the 1st of January um, the year that we should have celebrated the 12 and a half wedding anniversary we call it the copper wedding anniversary um, that was the day where his dad left Denmark to go and start his new life with his new wife in Thailand and that contrast of um, being alone and being really, really alone um, after having been alone with Alex for one year already, that, just, that was just rock bottom. And in a way, really in my face, mm -hmm. that, that was where I was. And that, that day, I, I dared to take it in and mm -hmm. really own it. And that's when the journey could start. Yeah. And you say that you, in that realization, which could be very painful just in and of ourselves, you realize that your son had not only lost his father because his dad moved to another country, but he lost the connection with you. Yes, because I had lost the connection with me. I had given so much away, which is totally on my plate and my responsibility. But I got a notice before I can start bringing back yeah. and filling up my own batteries so that I have something once again to share with my son and then later also to share with someone else um, in my life. Yeah. And so this started you on this path, this path of self-discovery, of self-nurturing and self-love, which led you to many different books and, and conferences and personal development workshops, including using the art of feng shui, which is this ancient art of placement. Tell us a little bit about this, this journey for, for yourself. Mm. I spent a number of years on a self-development journey. I actually also um, did my own self-development because I, was in, I chose to stay in the house with our um, neighborhood in our relations that we have here. And to have a big house and the um, memories of a life <laughs> with my ex-husband in the house, I needed to do a lot of work. So I was painfully aware of how much a house or your physical surroundings really impact you. That was a good motivation to work with them. So I went to a Feng, Feng Shui um, workshop with some friends and I realized that in order to work with Feng Shui, <coughs> you really need to know what it is that you want to achieve. And at that time, I was so tired that I didn't really know what it looked like and what it was that I wanted. So instead of going and working with Feng Shui or Feng Shui, I signed up for a um, development, personal development program, where we would spend time looking into each of the areas, uh, life areas that are in the um, Feng Shui, and dive into life energy, values, love, um, and did that whole um, journey with amazing people. 
so one of the things that I found was that not journeying alone is really key. Mm. I get that. So you got to do this, this exploration, and, and I know in feng shui you've got these areas of life in the bagua. So you literally were looking at everything from your, from your, your personal development to love to finances to family. And when did you get to the point where someone else told you, hmm, you can't expect you know, someone to, to, to want to live in this house with you until you really make it your own? That was one of um, the other participants at the um, self-development course. Actually had the, the Feng Shui um, consultancy um, training. So once I had established the self-love, once I had really refueled my batteries and, and could really feel comfortable and home in my own skin again, I decided that it was time to to boost the energy in the house to support my son even more missing his dad and and also having his own journey and me supporting my journey as well so I called her in and we walked around all of the house and because I dared to be honest I think it really worked because I dared to look at what was at stake and one of the things was that I really really wanted to share my life again with someone and I remember <laughs> vividly, she turned around and said to me, you can't expect anyone would want to live here with you where you've lived with your ex-husband. And I was like, what? <laughs> Taken aback and thinking, oh, no. But, but after a few days, I understood that she was absolutely right. Because it wasn't about what I wanted in the future. It was about really, really staying with me, owning that self-love journey and staying and appreciating that because out of that, that's where the energy, um, the good energy is that is the platform from which I and anyone else would really want to meet the next someone special in their life. Mm. So she brought me back to the self-love journey. Um, and helped me and helped me <laughs> hold myself there and focus on the life that we had instead of a life that we did not have because we did have a wonderful time and a wonderful life already and, and, and it could be and it could be <laughs> with additions yes for that mm. and did you did your son notice a shift with all of these changes you made I'm sure he does uh, he's very sensitive and we also talk about what it is that he he needs um mm. the colors in his room so so yes he's he's very much aware of of the impact of for example color and our physical surroundings and appreciates uh, <laughs> and appreciates when when things are working yeah and once you had your your physical space aligned with what you were feeling internally, this new newfound love for yourself and respect. How did you take the next step? Uh, was there anything intentional you did? As you know, some of the stories in Manifesting Love, people have elaborate rituals. What was it for you in your case? Was it just the process of doing feng shui and changing things in the home? Or was there a definite thing that you did to say, okay, now I'm really, really ready? I think the now I'm really ready was that now I'm really ready to stay in the self-love because when I can stay there, I can meet someone. And then by staying there, um, the thoughts of meeting someone came from a different place. And I, then I did start thinking, mm, someone I met <laughs> um, about a year before, he had been divorced and I thought, oh, he'd had enough time to, uh, <laughs> I could see him starting to look forward and, uh, and uh, orient towards the future again. And I thought, hmm, I would really like to meet him. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had thought the same. So I had had the thought and then a message came in from him saying, hey, would you like to meet for coffee soon? I was like, okay, yes. <laughs> That's a definite yes. <laughs> yes, nice alignment and synchronicity. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
Well, so beautiful. And and I, I remember that you you guys had agreed to meet for coffee, right? And when he got to your home, the coffee almost didn't get served. Tell me more. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was, I think, it was in the middle of like a Saturday morning laundry and just the house as it was. It wasn't made to be anything else than what it was and just welcomed in to a normal Saturday morning. And we walked around and looked at the house and we talked and we talked and we talked. And as you say, he had to ask for the coffee that I'd actually promised him. (laughs) And then at the end of the visit, he actually said, and I was yeah, taken aback to say the least, because of course I had not said anything about (laughs) all of the intentions and uh, um, the way that I'd worked with the self-love in the house and so that I would have the foundation for for also, or supporting my foundation for also meeting someone and sharing my life. So (laughs) before the end of the visit, he said, well, I can really feel that it's you who lives in this house. I was like, Mm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) yes, (laughs) it really was at that time. I'd really been through the house and cleaning up and making it mine and painting and yeah, all of that. And then adding the the intentional um, elements, the colors, the intentions after, after that. So it really was mine. And as it happened, he didn't mind sharing it with us. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so that was that was another amazing element in that. I love how it's allowed you to come together and share a life. And I, I, I also want to kind of touch in on this concept that I think has come through part of your self-love work, but also since then. And it, it's the also the name of... of your your whole work how hard can it be right it's this yes. this question about getting out of struggle and and trying to force things and instead you ask the question what if i just show up and make a living just being me and i think that essence is is really what your story was showing like what if i just loved myself just as i am and started arranging things just as i am with this sense of flow with the sense of heart can you tell us a little bit more about what it means to you? How heart can it be? Mm, yes. It is the empowering question that I navigate by. And it is, it's the opposite of how hard can it be, which I was met with at some point in my career. And it, it made me realize to what degree that I really need and want to do things well and to have a life that is based on a really heartwarming and sincere intention in in what I do and in how I show up for myself and how I show up for others. Yeah, so it's it's an empowering question that's both part of my, my work but also um, yeah, part of my life in general, and it has opened for so many, for so many new aspects in my life. I think what I realized when I was alone, needing to find solutions that didn't really exist, that I was so creative. Mm. I had, and I had such a um, a need. I think, for being creative, for finding solutions, for, again, exploring how well can we do it, even though sometimes the obvious solutions are not available anymore or at that moment. Mm. So that is one of the, one of the elements that's, yeah, part of the way that I do things today. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel the flow of your creativity, which... I had the good pleasure to experience and highlight when you were here with us on the French Riviera for our global luminary activation experience. And someone said, Andrea, you've just got to see what Lena's been drawing over here. And it was these amazing 
like summary kind of captions of whatever presentation was. You had had drawn and, and given little titles and it was just like so much creativity just pouring forth from you. So that's when we, we decided to work together on some of my hero images in one of my courses. I just love seeing that you can be in this, this state of flow and share that with us. Mm. And I can when I dare to just show up and listen. And I feel that I listen from my heart when I write or draw, that I listen to what the, what the speaker, the presenter is really sharing. What is it that their message really is? Not necessarily what they say, but how they say it, all of the subtle elements that I really, really listen. And then I feel free to just capture, capture that. And then it, the magic can happen. <laughs> and that is exactly what it is. It is magic. And I also have been recently introduced to your onboarding 3.0 concept, where you're giving individuals a, a sort of compass so that as you transition into a new company, you can assertively communicate what you need. Um, management can also kind of get a sense of meeting the needs of new employees. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you came up with this concept? Mm, yeah. I think onboarding is a transition, and it's a much bigger transition than we give it credit for usually. We go from belonging we go from knowing everything to not knowing anything and that's a really vulnerable position to be in and in most organizations it's a, it, it is by nature it's a really fractured process because a lot of people are involved and what I felt is that if we can then share with individuals because for me as a person it's 100% important that I succeed in this new job for the company. Yeah, well, maybe they can live with a uh, one or two uh, not making it. But for me, it's 100% important that when I've made this change, I want to succeed. And we easily get overwhelmed because by good intention, we share so much with new employees and many people are involved and the only one who knows how it feels. And what they really need is the new employee. So I helped measure actually um, based on three very simple questions, the onboarding in a multinational company, because we didn't have any resources for onboarding during the financial crisis. So we had to use our good heads and, <laughs> and what we could do, we could ask. We could ask, did you have a plan? We could ask, did you get the necessary support? And we could ask, do you know your job role so that you really know how to succeed? And that just turned out to be key because we could see how the people who received the necessary support and knew how to succeed, that they succeeded in their roles in the long term. Not only did they stay, but their performance was really high. So if they didn't, on the contrary, have a good onboarding, we could see that their chances of ever really being high performance in the company was not very great. And that's, that's not a fate we really want <laughs> to put in someone else's hands. Exactly. So I, yeah, and what I later found out is that those exact three elements are actually the DNA of highly successful teams. Mm. So I asked... I was kind of weary, oh, do I have enough to share with the world? Is this good enough? And, you know, all of the self-doubt that that is also part of life and that when you dare to deal with them, you find the answers. And then someone pointed me to Daniel Coyle's work describing the elements um, for highly successful teams, and they are exactly the same elements. We need to feel safe. We need to be able to be vulnerable and we need to know the purpose so they align in the essence with with the elements of the onboarding so what we do with the onboarding is that we don't just create successful framework for the new employee we actually pave the way for them to succeed as a team which is amazing that's what i want to be part of 
<laughs> that we succeed together, that it's not about just one person, but yeah. that we can help each other. Yeah, I love it. And I'm, I'm very eager to explore this as, as you know, the work that I'm doing with helping um, individuals and corporations deal with stress and burnout, because I believe that onboarding or that transition back into work after you've experienced burnout can really shape the way that the new culture in the organization um, can be modified as well as for the individual so that they are not carrying the burden all by themselves. Exactly. You are such a wealth of, of information and guidance and I love that you are now so tuned into your heart that you can just step up and share these things with the world. So thank you. Thank you so much. So there you have it, my friends. If you are curious to learn more about the art, the drawings, and the onboarding, please visit howheartcanitbe.com so that you can connect with Lena. And grab a copy of the book because I know that you're going to find other elements of her story will really, really touch you, especially as you may also be on a self-love journey as you prepare to manifest love. Selena, once again, thank you so much for sharing your story in this book. Thank you so much. So there you have it, my friends. As usual, I want you to remember that you are a gift to the world. So share your presence with passion. Much love.